it's Monday again. Whoa, Nelly. It is 5.47 p.m. It is 60 degrees. That may be the high of the day. It was way too hot yesterday. And then over the course of one night, everything just kind of plummeted. And then all of a sudden, it's fall. And you can tell because I had to bust out a long sleeve shirt. I'm part of America's Net Back at Bat Climb team. In case you cared. You've seen this shirt before, actually, haven't you? Yeah. So, it was raining this morning. Although by the time I left, I think it had stopped raining. And I don't know if it's raining the rest of the day or not. Here's how my day has gone. Again, I'm having this V8. I intended to have three hours ago now. I don't know where all the time goes. Must be working. What fun is that? It's not the work, though. It's all that stuff that doesn't work that I do outside of work that takes almost as long as work and seems to be the equivalent of a full-time job for which I receive no pay and really should start questioning why I do all these things that I do. Is it to feel good about myself? Is it to show off? Is it for money? No, it's not for money. But I just seem to find these wastes of time that take incredibly long times. Watching pay-per-view, that's one of them. But it was an alright pay-per-view, I thought. WWE Knife Champions. I sure liked it more than It's False did. It, it just pains me to see It's False continue to write about stuff that he hates and to tell us how much he hates it. In fact, I sympathize with it because it seems like I'm doing that for things that aren't writing about wrestling, but why do I keep doing them? Obviously, I don't like them. Clearly, I don't like them. Well, I don't think that it's false doesn't like them as much as he lets on, but I thought that was a perfectly fine, okay way to end the main event. It certainly wasn't worth all the scorn and derision and I don't know. But that's just my opinion. Which isn't worth anything, which is why I don't offer it. I try to talk about pay-per-views on the W. Mostly because by the time I've seen them, it's like too late to really offer a cogent response anyways. But I think we're past the point where my opinion affects anyone else's opinion. Now I'm just an old guy screaming about how much I hate skits. And everybody else is like, what's wrong with you, old man? Those skits were awesome. And I don't think they were, but... Get off my lawn! So when I should have been cleaning up the DVD post, it's like I just said, well, why don't I spend a couple hours and try to download every album by the suburbs? Why not? How hard could that be? Well, it took three or four hours. But I did get practically everything. Uh, so if you need anything by the suburbs, I can hook you up. Just don't tell the suburbs because no money is changing hands. And they're not seeing any of it. Of course, one of them is no longer with us, so he probably doesn't care as much. Do you even know who the suburbs are? I didn't. It was a seminal proto-punk, post-punk, punk. punk well, 1978 to 86, so they started as punks, and then they kind of did their own deal. But they are very influential in uh, Minneapolis, in the Twin Cities music scene, from what I hear. Apparently, Minneapolis 1980 is a, a genre. I didn't know that, because I wasn't here. But uh, having downloaded all those things, I forgot to put them on the thumb drive to bring into work. So, thumb drive, hopefully in my pocket. Here it is. 16 gigs, baby. I don't know why any of us write to CDs or DVDs anymore. That was multitasking, though, because I kind of watched football while I did it. Actually, I didn't even watch football most of the time. And I heard that the all the early games wrapped up in a really exciting way, although they almost all ended up with uh, the home team winning. 
So those of you who somehow managed to stay in the Survival League, although I think New England was at home and they lost, that was the big upset, right? Still, you gotta pick. You gotta go with the home team. Always go with the home team. See where that gets you. We, two thirds of our people are gone, but you gotta stick with the home team. That was what bit me though. I picked a home team and I lost. Oh well. That's why it's gambling. I guess. Although there isn't anything at stake, so. <sighs> Packers are looking pretty good now, though, that everybody's one and one. And I guess nobody's going to beat the 49ers. I guess they're they're really good. I can't believe it myself. They're playing the Vikings next week, though. If I were to bet my life savings on a game, it would probably be the 49ers plus six on the road in Minnesota. That is a Minnesota game, right? Tell me NFL.com. NFL.com is still worried about last week. Oh, yeah, how about that Arakpo, huh? Season-ending injury already? Do you think that means that we will also see the season end of those god-awful Geico commercials featuring the caveman and Arakpo? No. Because now that he's injured, he has even more time to spend with the caveman. And their adventures will make even more Geico ads. Maybe. All right, I can't figure this out. I used to be able to navigate this site. And does it really matter? No. It doesn't matter where the game is played. The 49ers will obliterate the, the Vikings. And then we'll all wait to hear what Chris Cluey has to say about it. Whatever it is, it'll be gay friendly. That reminds me, I have a football question I need to attend to on the W from Doug. So as soon as I figure out 49ers at Vikings. Yeah, I knew that. I wasted a lot of time to confirm something I actually knew. Welcome to my world. Doug says, can Peyton win in Atlanta? Is that today's game? The Broncos and the Falcons? Interesting. Peyton can win anywhere because he's Peyton. So despite the fact that I'm not a big fan of the Broncos, actually I'm not a big fan of Peyton either, but, but Kim is, so by extension I have to be. Yeah, I don't. I can see Peyton winning this one, even though he's not the home team. That's toughy. What I'm hoping is that the first half will be really boring, so by the time Raw is over, business will have picked up. By the way, the WWE SMS has uh, texted all of us to say that Jim Ross will be returning tonight, so that'll be good. I know we all like JBL. I love JBL, too. JBL is a fantastic commentator. The truth is that JBL is the one holding that one up. He has got his own thing, and he doesn't want to do it, and that's why it's not getting done. WWE would love to have him, but they can't make it worth his while. There's not enough uh, first-class tickets and limos and money in the world to get him to leave uh, whatever he's... What is he doing now? I don't think Layfield Energy even exists anymore, does it? I don't know. I tried looking up uh, Mama Juana, and I think it's been at least a couple years since anybody's been able to buy that product, so that tells you how well that went. kind of speaks to his financial savvy and acumen that all these companies don't seem to exist anymore, right? I mean, you go to LayfieldEnergy.com, you find out the domain expired, which means it's been at least a year since anybody's done anything on that. Ah, but who cares? Doug also mentioned freshen up the gun that goes squirt. Yeah, if you've seen that ad, you put those words together and immediately you think of uh, that ad and the crude jokes that follow that ad campaign, as Doug says. I like the blue better than the green myself. I don't remember which one I liked more. They are both good. What I really liked, and I don't remember if I said this on Friday or not, was the Dr. Pepper gum that was made in the same fashion. And I don't even know if that exists anymore, but that was some good stuff. It felt like it had that soda syrup in the middle. My 10 minutes is up. And I forgot to say, uh, Shana Tova. Did I get that right? Come back tomorrow and we'll see me butcher another language, perhaps. And we'll see what kind of long sleeve shirt I come up with. Bye!